When I was 23 years old, I became the president of the first company that I ever co-founded. I was really grateful because everybody else that I was working with was a man and they had asked me to be president. I felt that that acknowledged that I had a good head for business and indeed we ended up growing the company to over 200 people. But eventually the entire industry collapsed and with it went our company. And there were some choices that had been made by my management team, by my co-leaders, that I wished in retrospect we had done differently. I think because we were all in our 20s and we were all fairly new to this, and this was years ago, so way before the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world had shown us that a kid could build a billion dollar company. And at the time, I was probably one of about six women in my entire industry in any kind of management position. I would go into whatever meeting and I would always be the only woman. I remember meeting another a software company head who was a woman and just like embracing her, like, thank God there's somebody here. And I realized later that every, every industry has timing and they go up and they go down. And no matter what anybody says to you, that's going to happen. So everything is about timing. We had so many opportunities to sell our company. And when I would say, hey, we should, you know, take one of these and we should sell. And I was told that we had a lifestyle business and that basically this is what we were going to do for the rest of our lives, which on the one hand, I thought was very interesting work that I was completely passionate about. And on the other hand, I understood was maybe not going to always be the case. So eventually, after the company collapsed, bringing my finances down to the rock, rock bottom, I mean, there was a time that I think my credit score was lower than 500, I uh, decided that it was a complete non-negotiable that I was going to make my own business decisions. And that included choosing the next industry that I was going to participate in. Regardless of what my partner, who had been my life and my business partner for a long time, wanted. And it wasn't that he fought so hard against it. It was just that I really didn't give him room to be a part of that decision process. I simply knew that I needed to take control of my own destiny. And I did. I ended up going into real estate and riding the big wave up uh, in the first decade of this century. And it was really a powerful experience for me. It was the first time that I had stood on my own. It was the first time that I was able to say as a businesswoman, I can build and grow and succeed on my own. And it was a powerful experience. Eventually, it was a series of very hard lessons as the market crashed, but I don't regret any of it. And what was really non-negotiable for me and still is, is the opportunity to be in charge of my own destiny. And I actually had an experience in real estate where I was in business with some gentlemen who I stopped believing in. I started seeing the market crashing, not the, you, you know, not the United States market, but the market that I was in, which was Vegas. I could just see that that was unsustainable. My time in the software industry had taught me that what goes up must come down. And I tried telling them and nobody believed me. So I ended up leaving that partnership and leaving the Vegas real estate market and getting out before the big crash happened there. I wasn't so lucky in other cities, but I was so grateful that I listened to my own instincts there. And I was so grateful to have made at least one decision correctly at the end. And 
that's what it's all about. I get to be in charge of my own destiny and those mistakes are mine. I get to own them and forgive myself and move forward. And I'm really grateful.